Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 6.3, square root functions and inequalities. First, we're going to start off with some vocab words. First vocab word is square root function. Square root function is a radical, is a square root. Right here, ladies and gentlemen, would be the radical, and it is a square root. Anytime there is nothing in this area, that means it is a square root. It could possibly have a 2. A 2 would make it a square root. But if it had any other number besides a 2, it would not be a square root. A radicand is the expression underneath the radical sign. Radical sign there. Here is your expression underneath of it. So your radicand would be 4x. And then the radical function is a function that contains the root of a variable. So here is our variable underneath the radicand. So therefore, we have a radical function. So let's try some of these problems. We are going to be asked to graph a lot of square root functions today. When we just have lone x, the only x underneath the square root, we're going to pick 0 to start with. We make a table and we pick 0 to start with in our table if x is the only thing underneath the square root. So now if we plug 0 in, the square root of 0, you plug it into your calculator, is 0. The square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 2 is 1.41. Square root of 3 is 1.73. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 5 is 2.23. And I will help you in class if we have troubles finding the square root button on our calculator. So now let's go ahead and graph this. 0, 0, 1, 1. Then we go over 2 up 1.4. We go over 3 up 1.73. We go over 4 up 2. We go over 5 up 2 and almost a quarter. Now if we connect those dots, what does this graph look like? This would be the graph of a square root function. This is also known as a parent graph or a parent square root function is this guy right here exactly what we graphed. Let's try some more examples. Now we're asked to graph the function and identify the domain and range. Now when we have x minus 2 inside the square root, see how the minus 2 is inside the square root? We always want this to be 0. We always want that to equal 0. So that's going to be our first number in our table. So it's x minus 2 equals 0, and so we add the 2 over, so x equals 2. So we're going to start with 2 in our table, and then increase from there. So it's 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now when we plug this in, it's going to be 2. It's going to be this 2, or the square root, 2 minus 2. That equals the square root of 0, which is 0. So here we have 0, 3, we have the square root of 3 minus 2 equals the square root of 1, which equals 1. So here we have 1. Going on with 4, we have the square root of 4 minus 2 equals the square root of 2, which is 1.41. 1.41, we keep doing that with all our numbers. Putting 5, we get 1.73. We put in 6, we get 2. Let's go ahead and graph this guy. So it's 2, 0. We go over 2, stay right at 0. We go 3, 1. So over 3, up 1. 4, 1 1.4. 5, 1.73. And then 6 is 2. Now we go ahead and connect those dots. Now our square root function is this line right here. We also have to ask ourselves, and it, sorry, it keeps going on, there should be an error right here. We have to ask ourselves, what is the domain? Remember, the domain is your x values. Well, where do you start having x values? All the way over here at 2, right? And where is it going? It is greater than that 2. So x is greater than, or it could be equal to, a positive 2. The range is your y values. Well, here's the start of your y's. It will keep going up and up gradually, so we have y is greater than or equal to, what's our lowest y coordinate is 0. So y is greater than or equal to 0. Now we're asked to graph this function. Notice the difference here compared to the last slide. Notice how we just have x 
inside that square root function, x is the only thing. So if x is the only thing inside that square root, we are going to start with 0 and then work our way up. 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. We plug all those x's in for uh, x. So it's square root of 0. Now be very careful when you punch it into your calculator. Some calculators you have to go square root of 0, enter, then minus 2, which would give you negative 2. So here would be negative 2. All right, other calculators you can type straight in there, but just be very careful how you type it in. This will be negative 1. And so if I keep going right down the line, negative 0.58, negative 0.26, oh, points a little high, negative 0.26, and 0. So let's go ahead and graph these points. So it's 0, negative 2. It's 1, negative 1. 2, negative a little bit above a half. 3, negative 2.6. And 4, 0. Let's go ahead and graph these points. And there is my function. The graph of the function, I should say. What is the domain? Domain is your x values. Where's your x values start? They start at 0. So x is greater than or equal to 0. Your range, how lows do your y's go? They go to negative 2. So y is greater than or equal to negative 2. Let's try one more equation here, one more function. The very first thing we have to do, we have to set what is underneath that square root equal to 0. So it's x plus 3 equals 0. Solve for x, x equals negative 3. So that's going to be our first value in our table. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1 from there. Plugging them in, again, be very careful how you plug them in. It's going to be negative 2, then you take that times the square root of negative 3 plus 3 minus 1. Type it in like that, and you should get negative 1. Negative 1 goes in our table. Then just continue that pattern. We get negative 3, negative 3.82, negative 4.46, and negative 5. Graphing these guys. So we go over negative 3, down 1. Negative 2, down 3. Negative 1, down 3.82. 0, down 4 and almost a half. 1, we go down 5. So now we are opening up the other way. And what do you think us caused or what do you think caused us opening up the other way? There is our graph. What is our domain? Our domain is x is greater than or equal to what was our x value? Negative 3. Our range is what is our lowest value? Well, there is no lowest value, right? It keeps going on and on forever. It goes down on and on forever. So y is less than or equal to, where does our y start at? Starts at negative 1. Now let's try another one, but here we have a inequality. Notice the difference. Before we had an equal sign, but now we have an inequality. We have the same type of uh same type of equation that we had last slide so I know I can pick negative 3 and we should come up with the same numbers correct if I plug them all in now when I graph this I'm gonna go ahead and graph this again negative 3 go down negative 1 negative 2 down 3 negative 1 down 3.8 0 down 4.4 and 1 down negative 5 I go ahead and graph these. But what kind of line should I have? I should have a dotted line because it is there is no underline underneath the inequality. So I'm going to dot my graph to the best of my ability. And so it keeps going on and on forever. Remember that it's dotted. Now, rem also, we have an inequality, so we have to shade. When we shade, what point do we like to pick? I always like to pick coordinate point zero, 0. So you're going to plug 0 in for y and 0 in for x to see where we have to shade. So let's go ahead and try it. We have 0 is less than negative 2 times 
the square root of 0 plus 3, and then minus 1, make sure that is outside your inequality. Then we have less than negative 2, square root of 3 minus 1. We keep rocking it. It turns in to be a negative 3.46 minus 1. So 0 is less than a negative 4.46. So is this true? No, it is not. It is false. So if it is false, we want to shade away from it, right? So where do we shade, though, on this graph? Well, our range is right here, yes? Well, I cannot pass that range, and I cannot pass the domain going past that point, so I'm going to shade everything underneath of our line. I shade up and two, up to x at negative three, right, because I cannot go past that point. Now let's look at some general equations. This is the general form of a square root function where f of x equals a times the square root of a x minus h plus k. Looking at horizontal translations. We have a horizontal translation if our h is positive. So if this was uh, x minus 4, then we would move it to the right. We move it to the left if it was x plus 3. Our domain is always going to be x is greater than h. We have vertical translations with k. We move k units up if k is positive. So if k is positive, we go up. If k is negative, we just go down how many units k is. Then our range, if a is greater than 0, you'll also have a greater than or equal to k. If a is less than 0, f of x will be less than or equal to k. Then the orientation, which way it opens up or down? Well, we know that judging by if a is positive or negative. If a is less than 0, or if it was, if it was a negative a, the graph would be reflected across the x-axis. If a was greater than 1, it would be vertically stretched. And if it was 0, if it was 0 less than a is less than 1, which would make it a decimal, say 0.59, it would be compressed vertically or a vertical shrink. Now, if this stuff doesn't make sense, that's completely fine. You can always check out your graphs and just look at your graphs from there. We'll discuss a little bit more on this in class. But that does it for section 6.3, square root functions and inequalities. Good day.